Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. We have all you need to know about this upcoming week and what's coming for markets. All of your major events and my expectations brought to you. Free 99 from the east coast of Florida. Check it out. We're doomy and gloomy outside today. What's going on? Just my luck. Nonetheless, ladies and gentlemen, let's get rocking and rolling. I think we're pretty well aware of the major event this week. That is the election and what ramifications come with that. We all know at this point the negatives associated with this election. No matter who wins, if there's a sweep, that's bad. That means if the Senate goes red or blue, if the presidency goes red or blue, if, if they both go red or both go blue, you know, that's not great. There's 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 more so a Republican sweep that is the concern from Wall Street's perspective. I think we'll get over a sweep pretty fast. The thing I don't think we'll get over fast is if the election is contested. That's the the bearish argument for this upcoming week. It really has to do with the election in its entirety. As long as there is no sweep and as long as there is no contested election, then Wall Street is going to rally after the election. That looks pretty likely, just given the positioning that you're seeing out there. I mean, look... Look at the VIX for an example. VIX is sitting just under 22. Like there's there's a lot of puts out there. There's a lot of shorting activity taking place out in our markets. What do you think happens when the event comes and goes? Short sellers, hedge, hedgers, they say, oh yeah, we probably don't need to be short anymore. And they go cover on those short positions. As long as we don't have a contested election and we don't know who the president is or a sweep that the markets do not like, then you will see a lot of shorts covering on short positions. You will see the markets go higher after the election as long as it's not a sweep and not contested. Now, the other side to that is if we do have a contested election, there's not going to be much buying taking place. There's not going to be as, as much liquidity in markets. And you might see people adding to those short positions because of that uncertainty. And when there's not a lot of buying pressure, but there's a lot of shorting, you can get pretty aggressive downward moves in markets. And that is really the main risk for stocks this upcoming week is the election. Now, we also have the Fed on Thursday. And let me just tell you, the Fed does not like what's going on right now in Bondlandia, okay? The Fed cut rates 50 basis points. Why? To try to accommodate the markets, to try to push bond yields lower, maybe send mortgage rates lower, get people buying into homes again, you know, allow for business lending expansion. The opposite of that has taken place, mostly due to the election, mostly the Trump trade that has gotten priced into markets. I do not believe in the Trump trade whatsoever. I do not think we'll see higher inflation um, and more government spending, I think it could be the opposite of that, which in the near term, again, is kind of negative for the economy. Markets love when governments deficit spend. It's kind of stimulative. Um, but I, I, I don't think that is what we're going to see. Long term, that's going to be great for the country. But I, I, I guess to be decided because we don't know who the president is going to be. All in all, I don't believe in the Trump trade. But again, back to the Fed on Thursday. Hopefully, by then, we know who the president is going to be. If we do, great news. Markets are probably moving higher. The other part of good news is the Fed is going to be very bullish. They're going to be dovish. They're going to sound like they're not worried about inflation, that, yes, they're still watching it, but they see the risk to economic activity much greater to the downside than the risk of inflation to the upside. They're going to say nothing has really changed our expected path of interest rate cuts. They're going to say, look at the last dot plot. And that's pretty much what we're still expecting, right? You're going to hear confirmation of the of the bull thesis for the Fed, the accommodation thesis from the Fed. And that is going to be comforting 
for markets. Now, if we have a contested election, I don't think the markets are going to care too much about what the Fed says. If the markets are moving higher following the election, if there's not a contested election and there's not a sweep, then the Fed's just going to add more juice to that rally. And you know, honestly, I think it's about 50-50. It, it's, it's, it's hard to predict what's going to happen with elections to begin with. And that's where it's 50-50. It could be contested. It might not be. If it is contested, that's bad. The Fed's not going to save the markets in a contested election kind of environment. But if it's not contested, markets are going to go higher and the Fed's just going to boost the markets even more. Now, I do want to be very clear. I don't like big tech here. Even if we get the bull thesis, the bull scenario plays out, I think probably 80 plus percent of the upside in the in the markets is going to come from small caps and mid caps, bio pharma, maybe not healthcare. We'll see. Who knows? Healthcare gets gets a little weird uh, during presidential cycles. But I think it would be a broader rally than what we've seen you know, in recent weeks. So I would just want you to be a little bit careful there. Even if you are bullish on our markets, I think being bullish on certain areas over others makes the most sense right now. Next up, we have earnings. Now, the, the bulk of earnings is over with. The, you know, almost 40% weighting in the S&P that, that big tech has is pretty much over with besides NVIDIA. NVIDIA comes out the week of November 20th. So we have a couple of weeks still until we get NVIDIA. But we will continue to get NVIDIA adjacent companies, if if you will. We have Supermicro Tuesday and After Hours. They're going through a bunch of drama right now. So I don't know how much that's going to move NVIDIA or affect the markets. Supermicro is just up shit's creek I, I don't even want to get into it but uh their their accountant just quit and said they could not be a part of the company anymore because of basically the the, the shady stuff that's going on there so that's a problem wednesday and after hours you have arm that reports earnings they do create a pretty lockstep sympathy move with nvidia so that is one to definitely be watching for qualcomm reports wednesday and after hours you have elf clover app loving Mercado Libre, IONQ, and others Wednesday and after hours. Wednesday pre-market, you have Celsius, Novo Nordisk, CVS Health, Aura, Tiva, Cedar Fair, Toyota, and a couple of others. Again, just to go back, Tuesday, Supermicro is really going to be the biggest one on this list. And Monday, you're going to have Palantir, Cleveland Cliffs, Hims and Hers, uh, win NXP and a couple of others. So really Wednesday starts off more of the larger company earnings for this week and uh, what you know could move the broader markets like Qualcomm and Arm. Now Thursday you will have v Vistra Energy, Moderna, Barrett Gold, Datadog, Halliburton, uh, Cameco, Hershey's and some others. Thursday and after hours you have DraftKings, Arista, Block or Square, Rivian, Unity, the Trade Desk, Affirm, Fortinet, Pinterest, Airbnb, and then Friday you have Sony and a couple of others. So earnings this week are not going to be the big catalyst like they were last week, but they still could be important, specifically SMCI, Supermicro, Arm, uh, Qualcomm, right? Palantir to a lesser extent, maybe for the small and, and mid cap guys. So still could get some bigger movers here, but it's not a big earnings week as far as large companies. Now, we do have some economic data coming out this week. On Monday, you have a three-month, six-month, and three-year bond auction. If demand comes in good for those, that would be good news for bonds. Tuesday, we're going to get exports and imports that will affect the GDP estimates um for the quarter that we are currently in so if we go ahead and refresh this we're expecting 2.3 percent gdp for the fourth quarter of 2024 so definitely coming down a little bit this is down from 2.7 percent on october 31st so you've already come down quite a bit uh, real gross private domestic investment growth decreased from 2.9% and 1.1% respectively to 2.6% and 0.4%. So some of these data points will start to impact Q4 GDP estimates as, as well, since that is the current quarter. 
um, that we are in. Now, you also have ISM services PMIs, expecting that to come in at about 53.3. Um, last month was at 54.9. Business activity expected to tick downwards, uh, two tenths of a percent. Employment expected to actually rise one point. New orders expected to fall two points. And services prices expected to fall about five and a half points. So uh, that will definitely impact the markets a little bit. That's going to be Tuesday in the morning. So we'll we'll react to that in markets. It's, it's really Tuesday and after hours where all of the attention will go right to the election. Um, so, yeah. On Wednesday, you don't have much of anything for economic data. On Thursday, you have the Fed. That's really your main event. And on Friday, you have the unemployment rate coming out from Canada. But you do get Michigan Consumer Sentiment preliminary numbers for November, expecting things to pretty much stay uh, roughly where they were from last month, not expecting much of a change there. So if things do change, that can definitely cause markets to move. Again, as long as we don't have a contested election or, or some other negative event this week, I think that consumer uh, sentiment report could be important on Friday. So overall, again, I would say it's 50-50 right now, which is pretty bad in stock market terms as, as, as far as 50% um, chance that we go higher or 50% chance we go lower. Normally, there's a much greater chance that we go higher versus lower. Um, just think about every other week or, or couple of week period. It's usually not this kind of undecided up in the air, and it really comes down to the election. And I cannot confidently say that things are going to be great or things are going to be terrible. I can make a strong case for both. And that's what I have been doing here in this video. Make up your own, you know, conclusion for this, your own thought for this. I personally think it's better to be prepared than to not be prepared. Being prepared could mean raising more cash on the sidelines, waiting to confirm whether or not it's a contested election or not, and then uh, perhaps hedging portfolios. But raising cash is also... A weird way or different way of of hedging your portfolio in and of itself so these are kind of my thoughts for this upcoming week let me know down below in the comment section what stocks that you are looking forward to buying um down there me personally i'm looking at applied digital uh that that could be um one that i am looking to add to on any weakness i think that could be a sleeper ai play that the markets have not realized just yet but that's not financial advice that's just personally a stock that i'm looking at and i'm actually looking at a bunch of stocks i think i think there's a lot of stocks out there that that are actually pretty attractive um, believe that or not you guys have a great rest of your day and i will see you in the next one